The MACD indicator is one of the most popular indicators on the planet and it has given rise to at least two amazing strategies. In today's episode, I'm going to show you how to build the MACD indicator into your auto trading bot. Before I get into the code on how to build a moving average convergence divergence or MACD indicator into your auto trading bot, there's a couple of things that you need. The first one is you need access to some OHLC or candlestick data from an exchange of your choice. In this particular channel, I've been showing people how to retrieve that data from MetaTrader, but you can use any exchange that you want as long as you know how to get that information from it. You specifically need the close value. Secondly, you need to have TALib installed and ready to use on your computer, ideally installed with PIP <clears throat> with Python as well. Now, if you're using Windows, that can be a bit of a challenge. So check out one of my previous episodes where I show people how to install it on Windows for them. Once you've got those two pieces of information, we're ready to go. The MACD indicator is actually composed of three different pieces of information. First of all, we have the MACD line, which is the difference between the input two signal lines. Then we have the MACD signal line, which is an exponential moving average of the MACD line. And then we have the MACD histogram, which is a measure of the difference between the MACD line and the MACD signal line. Now, I know that sounds really complicated and it actually kind of is. If you want to know more about the MACD, check out my previous episode where I talk through it. But just be aware that those are the three pieces of information that we'll be calculating in our episode today. I hope you enjoy. Get started by heading off to the indicator underscore lib file, which I've used in previous episodes. This great little place is a little, basically a pseudo library that allows us to store all of our different indicators. And if you've been following me for a while, you'll know that I love to use these little pseudo libraries. You'll also probably note that I really, really enjoy commenting my code well, and that's really important. I like to think of commenting your code as like a love letter to your future self saying, hey, you're awesome, and here's what I did that day. All right, so we'll define the function here as calc underscore MACD. Makes it really easy. And we're going to pass it a series of values and input the defaults. The first one is gonna be the data frame, which is going to be your OHLC or candlestick data. And then we're gonna have our MACD fast with a default value of 12, MACD underscore slow, which is a default value of 26, and our MACD underscore signal, which is a default value of nine. Now you can absolutely modify those values throughout the rest of this episode, but those are the ones that are commonly used when calculating the MACD by default. Then I'll update all of the comments for the code Now, I'll just make a comment here while I go through and update the comments. Um, if there is a signal or an indicator that you want to hear more about, I'd love to hear from you in the comments to the YouTube video. That's really important. It kind of tells me what's working, what's not, and it also let me know, you know, what you'd like to hear about. So please, if you've got something that's on your mind that you want to hear about, please drop me a note. Okay, now those input um, EMA values can really be any EMAs that you want. And in fact, if you're doing some backtesting, uh, using backtesting.py, for instance, you can modify those values to you know, custom fit them to any kind of security that you wish. Um, as long as you take care not to overfit your data, it can be really interesting to see how different input EMAs can result in different trading outcomes for your strategy. Okay, with the commenting completed, let's move on to the next step. All 
right? So like I said in the quick little intro before, there's three pieces of information that the MACD uses. We have the MACD line, the MACD signal line, and the MACD histogram. And those three pieces of information are used in different ways, depending on what strategy you're implementing or how you're in integrating the technical indicator into your auto trading bot. So we're going to store all three of those in the data frame that we passed this function right from the start. Okay, that's a really simple call to TALib using the MACD. And we'll put as inputs. Hey, you see there, I just remembered I needed to input that, uh, sorry, import that library into the this library or the pseudo library. Okay, so we'll put as inputs the data frame close. And then we'll put in the values that we've passed it for the MACD fast, MACD slow, and MACD signal. Now, in this particular episode, I don't actually cover how to chart it. Um, if you were watching some of my previous ones where I'm moving around on the dash chart, that is all in the code on the auto trading bot. Um, but, you know, that's really straightforward. And if you do want to see um, me show you how to chart it, please let me know in the comments. Okay, now we're going to return that information back to the calling function. And that's that. With our MACD indicator successfully being calculated, let's run it in main.py to see what information we get back. So to do that, head over to main.py and head down to your double underscore main double underscore function or the main function. In here, you can see that from previous episodes, I've simply used a lot of the framework that I've used before in terms of starting up MetaTrader, making sure that it's running. You can see there I do the checks and then I kind of have the strategy, which we won't be using this episode, but I do use in other episodes. Basically, we have MetaTrader set up. So let's run, uh, get some data and run our MACD indicator and see what we get. First thing we're going to do is get our <clears throat> candlesticks or OHLC data. And I've chosen to do it on the ETH USD time frame. Uh, sorry, ETH USD currency pair. Okay, we're going to do it on the hourly time frame, but you can use any time frame that you want. And we'll use a thousand candles. Bit of an overkill for this particular one, but it's just a nice default value that I use. Okay, now we're going to calculate the indicator. And I'll print the results to the screen. There we go. That's the MACD. To finish off, let's have a look at some of the ways we could customize our MACD. This will give you a lot of advantages if you're trying to use it and like fit it to whatever security you're trading. So let's have a look at how we could do that. One of the ways that we could modify it is to change what the input exponential moving averages are. This could be really helpful if we want to look at like longer periods crossing each other or shorter periods crossing each other. And basically you can put in any EMA. The only thing you need to be careful of is depending on the EMA that you use, the number of candles that you provide. Normally I try to do five times as many candles as my actual EMA. In this case, let's have a look at the 50 and the 200. We'll also change the MACD signal size to be 15 to account for the longer time frames. Let's see what happens. Okay, uh, forgot to print it to the screen, so I'll quickly just update and add in a print statement. And there you go. If you recall, if you went back to the previous one, you'll see that these values are quite different. 